Exciting week for us, uh, heading up to New York. The guys had a you know, much needed off day on Saturday uh, after being on for nine consecutive days with practice and games, going back to our preparation for Purdue. We practiced yesterday, had a very spirited uh, practice session. A lot of stuff that, that we're really attacking, uh, working to improve on. Uh, but the, the biggest thing that, that we're emphasizing to our guys is as we work to get better at all the basketball X and O elements and individual skill parts of the game is that we need to also continue to improve on the cultural parts of the game that win and go into winning. Uh, stuff like our response when things do or don't go our way, our competitive effort, our intentional execution, our willingness to be connected around one common cause. And that's what's going to make the difference. Uh, this week when we go up to New York, playing a great team in Georgetown. They have some phenomenal length and uh, versatility on their team. So it's, it's going to be a heck of a challenge for us, and our guys are really excited to get up there. Questions? Raise your hand. Alex, you, Shaka, you guys pour a lot into each game. How much of the next step is it to have back-to-back -back games, regardless of who you play on Friday, just to see how your guys can make that quick turnaround? Yeah, that's going to be, uh, you know, a really good test for us just to see how, how our guys respond to it mentally and physically. Uh, obviously, when you play back-to-back -back games, you put, you know, all of your emphasis as a team from a scouting standpoint, from a preparation standpoint into the first game. And then you have a very quick turnaround uh, to get ready for the next game. So, um, you know, we do everything we can to, to beat Georgetown. Uh, you know, like I said, they've got a, a, a really good team. They've they got a big kid, uh, Omer Yurtseven, that uh, if he's not the leading offensive rebounder in the country, he's got to be up there. He's got, I believe, 25 offensive rebounds in four games. And then they got a bunch of really good perimeter players um, that, that, that make their team go. So we put everything into that game. And then, you know, as soon as the game ends, uh, the coaching staff will obviously be prepared. Uh, for whoever we play next, and then we'll work quickly to get the players prepared. Brian, you playing well? Yeah, you touched on it. That's what I wanted to ask you about as Omir. I mean, this this is your guys' first test against a legit big guy. Yeah. I wonder, um, do you think the front court's ready for, for this? We tried to recruit him uh, a little bit when he was uh, coming over here from overseas. Uh, so been familiar with him for quite a while, and, and obviously he played well at NC State. Uh, and then decided to transfer to Georgetown. Uh, is our front court ready? Well, it's it's going to be a heck of a test. And you know, I think Jericho uh, ha has gotten off to the best start to the year that he's had in his three years here. Uh, we obviously, you know, want to continue building with him. And then we've got a variety of other guys that you know we're working to get better. But it's it's certainly going to be a a great test for for those guys and for our team overall. And I just wanted to ask you about Courtney. Seeing the the two games he's had with the other two games, I mean, just what'd you make of Friday night and how he responded? Well, it was a tough game for him, for sure. Uh, you know, I think with Courtney, he's really still getting his feet back under him after being out for the majority of the preseason. Uh, he had a wrist injury that occurred early in practice, and and it kept him out for three or four weeks. Uh, and just there's a rhythm that you lose when, when you're out. Uh, then when he came back, uh, Matt was out for a short time, and then we started playing games, and we're still working towards those guys being able to you know, play really, really well together. And as I've told them, you don't have to both play 10 games, 10 out of 10 games, uh, in order for us to win, but you know, ideally, we have both of you guys playing you know, very well, or one guy playing terrific and another guy playing well, uh, and that's a recipe for success. So, you know, Courtney, he wants to win as much or more than anybody. Uh, you know, he's, he's willing to do uh, what goes into it. Sometimes, as a younger player, he still you know, needs to continue to get better with details, but that's the same as any other player that's getting started with his sophomore year. But we've got a ton of confidence in him and excited to see him uh, bounce back from Friday. Kind of sticking with the guards, how different is it when you do go up? You, you've been right up front. This team is going to go as the guards go. You have experienced guards. How much more, I guess, confidence do you go up with, comfort 
when you do have seasoned guards going to MSG? Well, we, you know, we put that front and center, you know, for those guys is, is just helping them understand uh, the matchup that they have in front of them and how, how critical it is to win it. Um, and, you know, these teams that we're playing, uh, you know, in, in upcoming games and, and in, in games that we play, they've got good guards too. You know, Georgetown's got two returning guards that both averaged, you know, 12, 13 points a game last year as young players, and now they have a whole of another year of experience under their belt. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not just as simple as us saying, well, we have we've got pretty good guards. You know, we have to go outplay, you know, the other teams. And that's not just scoring the basketball, that's managing the game. That's, you know, valuing possessions, which is something that we have to get better at as a team overall. That's the defensive end spearheading our defense. And, you know, I think so far our, our guards have done a, a, a pretty good job of some of those things. And in some of the other areas, we need to get significantly better if we want to win this week. So the shooting's kind of dropped off a little bit. Uh, any big concerns you have there? We've actually shot really well in the second half of games. Um, we're shooting over 40% in the second half of our first four games, but um, we've, we've certainly had some cold spells, cold stretches in, in the first half, particularly at home. Um, you always want to shoot the ball better, for sure. I think this is a team that's capable of shooting 35 plus percent from, from three, uh, but it is a variable statistic. I mean, there's going to be some nights and even some halves where it's really, really good, and there'll be others where it, where it isn't. Uh, the emphasis for us is more on getting high-quality shots. And, you know, if Jace Febris gets a high-quality shot or Andrew Jones gets a high-quality shot or some of our other good shooters get a wide-open, high-quality shot, we feel good about that. With that being said, if you miss three, four, five, six in a row, uh, then it becomes, hey, we need to get the ball in the paint, you know, because, uh, you know, the rhythm of the game is such that, um, you know, the other team can kind of seize on some momentum if you mi miss a bunch of shots in a row. So um, it also is predicated to some extent on how the other teams guard you. Uh, you know, if, if they've backed off of you as a, as a guard if from, from me to you, um, then, you know, a, in basketball terms, that's almost like challenging your manhood. Um, and these guys are good shooters. So I, I think if we can make sure that we get great looks, I think over time we're going to make a good percentage. And on that note, Will Baker, where's his confidence and what's your expectations of him? I think, it, it, you know, his confidence, as, as we've emphasized to him, needs to be based on his work uh, in practice and all the time that he's put in. He's put in a lot of extra time on his body, uh, on his game and not so much on the very small sample size that he has so far in games. Now, you know, obviously as a young player, as a young person, uh, it's easy to put a ton of emphasis on that because everyone else is, you know, whether it's the media or social media or, or other people that are well-meaning. Uh, so we've just asked Will to continue to progress in terms of the work he's putting in at practice, to have a clear mind for following our process even if it's something that has nothing to do with offense, uh, guarding a certain type of screen, uh, keeping his man from getting the rebound, getting the rebound himself. And, you know, overall, he's made a ton of progress in that. Um, but it, it's going to take some time for him to, him to continue to put that, you know, into use better and better into the games. Cedric, on your right. You know, since you guys are a lot very guard-centric, um, how does that complement Jericho? Because he seems to be better as a lunch pail guy that – kind of cleans up in the middle? Well, I think the biggest thing with Jericho is um, he's playing with a better motor and more violence, uh, which is something that we've tried to emphasize in him. Uh, you know, the way that uh, he's, um, you know, making aggressive plays, whether it's rebounding, uh, whether it's cutting to the basket, um, you know, certain finishes, I think is a really good sign. And, you know, his overall uh, sturdiness and confidence as a player has grown quite a bit because his sturdiness and confidence as a person has grown. And that, again, is still a work in progress. Um, you know, he, like all of our other guys, is a long, long way away from what he will be. Uh, so our job as coaches is to, you know, aggressively pull him towards that as best we can, knowing that 
Uh, it's probably not all going to happen at once. Uh, but again, I'm uh, really pleased with the way he started the season and the way that he's responded. Um, you know, he had some teammates a couple games ago and coaches that really got on him in the middle of the game. And in the past, I don't know if he would have been able to handle that the same way, but you know, he took it uh, in a workmanlike fashion and, and responded well. Uh, speaking of the offense, now that you have another game sample to look at, what are you trying to hammer home most with those guys right now? Is it kind of the decision-making process of you know, what are good looks and how to yep. generate those looks? And, and with Courtney, um, I think he was your leading three-point percentage guy last season. Is his wrist still bothering him, or is it just a small sample from, from deep? Um, yeah, I, I don't know if he uh, would admit it or not, but I, you know, he's he's hurt that wrist a couple times, so um, it's probably not, you know, exactly what it would be if he had never heard it before. But he's certainly been cleared, and you know, he, he you know he'll shoot the ball really really well in workouts or in practice. Uh, so he's he's very very capable, and and I, and I think will make you know, his fair share of shots. What we've focused on with him is making sure that the, the fundamentals of the shot uh, are as good as they can be, whether it's the footwork, uh, his balance, uh, making sure he's stepping into it left, right. Uh, if he does those things, you know, we feel good about him making the shot. Um, you know, it's interesting, yes, about offense. You know, our guys are cutting really, really well. Uh, our spacing, for the most part, is very good. Um, but the areas where we need to, to continue to improve is we're turning the ball over about 15 times a game. That has to go way down. Um, and it'll be challenged against Georgetown because they press quite a bit. They've got great length. Uh, they'll be trapping. They'll be denying the ball inbounds. Uh, so we've got to make sure we do a good job taking care of the ball. And then, as we say, just playing we over me basketball, I thought uh, we did that at a high level against Purdue. I think the last two games, uh, it's been sporadic. At times, it's been good. Uh, at other times, uh, we've not made the extra pass or the extra play the way that we need to. And that starts in transition. You know, we, we're a team. The way that we want to play is as often as we can, we want to stop the other team, make them miss or turn them over. And that creates an opportunity in transition for us. We did not do a good job in our last game against Prairie View of cashing in on those opportunities. You know, whether it was a two on one that we didn't handle the right way or missing a layup or missing an open three. Uh, so that's something that we got to get better at. Anthony in the back. <clears throat> Coach, I, I, I don't know if any of your guys watched Patrick Ewing play, but uh, I know. I did. We, we all watched Patrick <laughs> Ewing play, but what about going to MSG, coaching against the Knicks legend, and uh, how cool is this environment going to be? Well, first of all, I uh, had the chance to, to get to know him a little bit, you know, since he's been in college coaching. Uh, he coached a couple guys that, that I used to coach when he was at Charlotte. Uh, and so I, I, I first got to know him a little bit from hearing from them what a great guy that he is. But, um, you know, being around him on the recruiting trail and getting a chance to, to just pick his brain and talk to him, uh, to be one of the top 50 players to ever play this game, uh, the humility he has, the work ethic he has, uh, the way that he, um, you know, can just approach the coaching profession, even though, you know, I asked him, I said, is there any way you can recruit someone that's as good as you? <laughs> and he said, no chance. Uh, but it, he, he's, he's just a really, really high level person. And you can tell when you watch their program that the guys there, uh, you know, they understand who they're being coached by, and, and there's a real respect level and an admiration for him. So, um, you know, it's a great opportunity for our team to play against uh, a terrific program in Georgetown, to play in the Garden, uh, which is as good of a venue as there is. Sean, you, you hit on it here and there, but when you guys are playing, excuse me, really good, we over uh, we over me basketball over the stretch of 40 minutes. What does that look like when you feel like that's being done for the vast majority of 40 minutes? Well, the stat that we use, Jeff, uh, to track that is, you know, we want to have, uh, if possible, uh, and this is, you know, depending on the game, depending on the way you're being guarded, it can it can make it more or less challenging. But we want to assist on 60% of our baskets. Uh, in the Purdue game. 
I believe, unless I'm getting it confused, I think it was 75. Uh, did a really, really good job sharing the basketball. There was a ton of what we call one mores, where the ball was passed through a guy. He might have had a decent shot, but he made one more pass to the next guy, and that next guy had an even better shot. Uh, these last two games, we've been below our goal. Uh, you know, I told the guys after the game, and again, this is human nature, but this is something that, that we have to own and improve on. Um, when winning is all that matters, uh, it, 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 it tends to work in your favor to do things like that. When it becomes, I want to win and fill in the blank, uh, that's how sometimes that assist number, for instance, goes down or maybe other things that you know, are emphasized as a team are, are not done at, at, at as high of a level. And again, that's human nature, but uh, if we want to be the team that we feel like we can be, uh, we've got to get better there. Shaka, back to Ewing. Is he the best player, now a coach, that you will ever coach against, do you think, or have ever? I can't think of anybody uh, <laughs> a better player than him. You know, I, I was a Bulls fan, so, um, you know, I, you know, distinctly remember the, the playoff series. Uh, I think especially from, I think it was 92, either 92 or 93, where it went to seven games and uh, just a battle back and forth between those guys. But there's some really good players um, coaching college basketball right now, you know, between Patrick Ewing and, um, you know, some of the other guys out there. But I, I, don't, I don't know that there's anyone as good as him. And then uh, to follow, what does it say about him to grind through the NBA? He, he had shots yeah. but never got that head coaching job and uh, to, to stick with it to the point that he has. Yeah, like I said, that, that what's so impressive is just his humility level uh, to because, you know, what happens is and, you know, it happens at this level, but I'm sure it's times a million when you're an NBA all star for many, many years is it's just rare air. You know, there's very few people like you. And so uh, you, you, you know, to be able to kind of <laughs> put your hard hat on and uh, start a program. Uh, and uh, obviously I'm sure it was helpful for him that he's doing it at his alma mater and he's had a ton of relationships there. But to build it and, you know, uh, do what he's done there through recruiting and through building his culture and his coaching staff, uh, you know, it's just really, really impressive. And I don't know that a lot of people uh, could do that, uh, but I think it says a ton about him. Brian, from up. Shaka, the uh, – guys are playing noticeably bit better perimeter defense. You know, I think it's the first time since you've been here that y'all are holding opponents under 30% from three-point range. What what went into the philosophy and the off-season talk about, hey, we, let's get better at this, this specific thing, running guys off the line? Well, we did not do a good job guarding a three-point line last year. And, you know, again, there's a million factors you can you can point to when you win or lose a game by one possession. Uh, but certainly, if you can take away a three, even if they get two, that's one less point. And if you do that a few times over the course of a game, that could change a one possession game. Um, you know, and then, you know, when, when we hired Luke, uh, that's, that's a big part of, uh, you know, his defensive philosophy is, you know, again, our goal uh, on the defensive end is to force a tough contested two point shot. Uh, so it's not just the percentage that team, teams shoot from three. It's that we literally don't want them taking very many threes. Uh, the guys have done a nice job of that in, in some of our games. There's been a, you know, a couple stretches where guys have gotten loose. But you know, I, I think uh, when you're playing dangerous perimeter teams and perimeter shooters, that has to be at the front of your mind. And just knowing that at any moment when they catch the ball, they can shoot. So we, we've got to make sure it's contested. So I think our guys have taken to that really well. Uh, Luke's done a terrific job in practice, uh, making that a huge point of emphasis. Uh, but it's, at the same time, it's something that, that we can keep getting better at. Bob in front. Uh, obviously, you have Andrew coming off the bench right now. But if you could get the production out of Donovan that you got uh, against Prairie View, how enormous a lift would that be if he can do things like that on a consistent basis? Oh, it'd be huge. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you want to have 
some punch coming off the bench, both in terms of scoring and just in terms of energy. And, you know, we told our guys yesterday, you know, he was the, he was the domino of the game because when he came in the game, our energy, uh, you know, just our juice out there went up. And, you know, I've said this before, he's a freshman, he's young, he, he still has some maturing to do. Sometimes he's going to make some plays for the other team, but he, he made a ton of plays for Texas. And, you know, I told him, I said, you added value when you were out there. That's why you stayed out there. It's not rocket science, but it, I think as a freshman, he's going to have some ups and downs, but if he can have moments like that, I think he can put them in his pocket and build off of them, and then he can become more consistent over time. Besides the obvious of different season, different personnel, different age, and those sorts of things, how is this team different than the team that was just recently up at Madison Square Garden not too long ago? Well, I think, uh, you know, obviously by that point in the year, Jackson was hurt. Um, but, you know, Jackson played the majority of, of the season for us. And I, I think um, he just was such a unique player. Uh, so this year's team is, is a little bit different without him. Obviously, Snoop and Dylan were a big part of our team uh, last year as well as Eli Long. So I think, you know, sometimes the biggest difference is who you don't have and then uh, how that changes, maybe the chemistry of your team, uh, who are your leaders, who um, really defines, you know, your team's experience. Uh, I think Matt is more confident now. I think his leadership is, is, is much better. Uh, we're still, you know, we're still on that work in progress, uh, but I think he is, significantly better at being able to say what he needs to say uh, than he was maybe at that point. Uh, defensively, we played really, really well at the end of the year last year, including those two games up there. Uh, you know, I, I, again, I think our team's got a lot of defensive potential. Uh, we've, you know, we've played really well on the defensive end through four games, but the exciting thing is, is, is there a ton of areas where we can improve? Uh, offensively, we're a lot different just you know, playing different. We had Dylan mostly at the four spot uh, last year, and now you know a little bit more perimeter oriented at that position. So I'd say those are those are the main things. But this team, you know, obviously there's a ton of chapters still to be written, and you know this is a this is a big chapter for us going up there because uh, depending on how you play, you know, it can be a, a really big springboard. I think either way, it's going to be something that you know we're going to need to grow from. And we have to make sure that if we are able to create success, uh, we don't, you know, come back here thinking that we have it all figured out. Uh, if, if, you know, if we hit a bump in the road, we got to make sure that, you know, we're, we're a team that's, that's capable of being really, really good. So we're putting everything we have into the first game, and then we'll play a quality opponent in, in the second game. And uh, our guys are really excited. Yeah, I, I've been I was really pleased with our guys uh, player driven leadership uh, in, in the Purdue game. I think that's what won us the game. You know, it, it's interesting because when you win a, a big game, uh, everybody points to the plays. You know, Matt was in the pick and roll three straight times and made the right read and we were able to score three straight possessions and we got stops on the other end. Uh, but what comes as a precursor to that is the guys being connected around one cause and having a, a player-driven uh, mentality. And I, I was really pleased with that. Uh, I think this past week, um, it's been just OK. I, I think we, we need to, to continue to, to remember that this is a standard that we have to uphold, regardless of who the opponent is, regardless of the time of year, regardless of whether there's you know, a very, very busy academic time or you're in the middle of break. Uh, circumstances at times can take guys away from, you know, that focus on what matters most, and, and that's what we have to fight. And we're putting that front and center for our guys, but th this will be an, an interesting trip for us uh, to see where our guys are with that. Yeah, Shaka, um, given 
the success that you guys had back in April at Madison Square Garden, do you think this gives anyone um, or gives the team more generally kind of like an added confidence going in that you've been here before and you know that you can win in this venue? Hopefully our guys have confidence, you know, shooting the basketball in there. Uh, I, I think that's a big thing anytime you go into a new venue. Uh, so, you know, hopefully Jace and, 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 you know, Andrew didn't play in those games, but hopefully our guys, you know, feel good uh, stepping in there knowing that they've won a couple games. But, you know, as it's been said, it's a new team and it's a new year. And, um, you know, I think for our guys, again, everything has to start on the defensive end. Uh, if we can defend with the intensity and the aggressiveness that we had the last two games that we played there, uh, that, that puts us off to a really, really good start. You mentioned Jackson. Did you get to see his start? You know, first NBA start last night, a double double, and the he had a block into like the fifth row. I don't know if you. I didn't get to see it. I I can't wait to watch the highlights. Um, and you know, the the exciting thing is, uh, you know, he's just scratching the surface. But you know, it's funny. We had a running kind of. It wasn't a joke. It was more of a ribbing, I guess, starting in the middle of last year, uh, and it was you know, hey, man, it'd be nice if you got a double-double. Um, and he never did. Uh, so <laughs> first thing he did in summer league in the very first game, he had a double-double, and he sent me a text, and it, and it just said, it just was a one emoji. It was a check mark. Uh, <laughs> and so now he got his, his first one in an NBA game, but I, I got a feeling there'll be probably hundreds more to come.